genre. In the world of Hollywood, movies get greenlit and redlit. They get remade and rebooted. But we are the ideal. I'm Sam Gash, and you are listening to Ideal Remake. Thank you for listening to Ideal Remake. We take movies that either have been, will be, or should be remade and talk about what the ideal version of that remake would be. And today we're talking about 19 different remakes that I made over the course of this year. It's the year-end wrap-up episode, and it's just me, and I'm here to thank all of my guests from this year. We made... There were 19 episodes this year, but I guess we remade more than 19 movies, especially considering last week's episode. But yeah, I, if you are someone who found Ideal Remake over the course of this year, thank you. Thank you for jumping in. Thank you for listening. And honestly, thank you for letting me take so much of your time to just enjoy talking about movies with you. Or at you, I guess I should say, if you're a listener. But um, if you're someone who kind of just jumped in and started with new episodes, great. If you're someone who's gone back and listened to the older catalog, great. Uh, This is an episode I try to do at the end of every year, thanking this year's guests for what they brought to the table this year. And like this year, it was very much amazing guests and movies they wanted to talk about. And it was incredible. Season 5 opened with a remake of The Mask with guest Adam Sheehan. Adam has a podcast or is a co-host of a podcast called Tales from the Short Box where they talk about comics, that week's comics, uh, and deep dives and all sorts of different things. And Adam really wanted to talk about The Mask because he's not a big fan of the movie, but he is a fan of the comics, which I'd always heard were these crazy violent things, which is true, and they are. And it was wild, especially coming up with something that was a blend of a remake of what the movie is as it exists, but also being true to this comic strip, this original comic strip, which the movie definitely pays homage to, but isn't as devoted to as some other things. The second episode is Defending Your Life. And Scott Corelli, Grand Poobah of Dueling Genre, came on to talk about this movie Albert Brooks is the name I was trying to think of and couldn't do it. It's an Albert Brooks movie, and it's basically just talking about, like, you're in the afterlife and you have to defend the sort of life you led. And it was really fascinating. And it's a movie that Scott truly loves, and I get, and it's like, it's a movie steeped in lore and richness, and I thought that that was fascinating. Um, And just our conversation, I think this ended up being like a two-hour long episode, just talking and talking about this movie. And I think we really came up with something that is truly fun and I would very much want to see. Episode three is mostly just for fun. Brian Greene is a huge Simpsons fan. And I'm like, well, we can't remake the Simpsons movie without Brian Greene. And so good old Bort came on the episode and we pitched what could either... I think we pitched two different versions. There's a version where it's like a finale of The Simpsons, and then there's a version where it's like, here's a movie, and then we keep going. And talk about what The Simpsons was, what The Simpsons is, talking about what The Simpsons meant to us, and all of that through the lens of The The Simpsons movie. Keeping it going with Dueling Genre hosts, episode four was My Super Ex-Girlfriend with guest Nick Jimenez. Nick had actually had the idea to talk about My Super Ex-Girlfriend last year, but then we'd asked him on to do a uh, remake of Nightmare on Elm Street. And so he was like, I'll put it off till later. And so it's My Super Ex-Girlfriend. It's a bad movie, y'all, but it's a great idea. And, oh man, the movie we came up with is just so good. I want I want us to be able to... Re- I gen- it's... Things like this, when it happens, is I want us to be able to make these movies just because it's so dang good. So then we had returning guest Kamara Darling, Mimi Darling, uh, to talk about The Island, which is wild. It's another super high concept movie. And (laughs) Kamara and I just like kind of break this movie down to its core components and then build it back up because The Island's so crazy. 
It's so crazy. You're just you're grow you're you're making people so you can harvest them for their organs, and it's oh, it's so weird. But it's again a crazy idea. But it's fun. It's super fun. We had a lot of fun talking about it. We both came in with very distinct visions for the movie, and we kind of had an interesting time trying to blend those things together. And then my friend Diane Bloom came on to talk about broadcast news. Broadcast news also has Albert Brooks, and it was kind of my introduction to Holly Hunter, because I I was having to watch Holly Hunter. I wasn't having to. I was getting to watch Holly Hunter in Mr. Mayor for a, another project I was working on at the time, but like getting to see Holly Hunter in like broadcast news, which is like, this is it. This is when we get to see how amazing and ter- just astounding she is as an actress. And just like the juxtaposition of these two things. And oh my God, she's just so good. And so it's hard to come up with a movie, especially about broadcast news now. Because how do you do that? How do you set that movie now? And so Diane and I had an amazing conversation about that. The next returning guest was Chris Lord. And Chris and I have talked about remaking Casablanca for a while, specifically because it's his favorite movie in the world. And he was he didn't want to remake it because he doesn't think a remake should ever be made, but also because he he had to do it because A, it's an interesting like dive into this thing that you love but also because he didn't want anyone else to get to remake it. It's like, if someone's going to remake Casablanca, it's going to be Chris Lord, and that's what happened. The next thing that happened is uh, following up an amazing, terrific movie, one of the best that's ever been, with one of the worst that's ever been, Dragon Ball Evolution. And I was like, you know what? I want to talk about Dragon Ball Evolution. And the person who I feel like I should talk about this movie with is Norman Mitchell. Norma Mitchell is another amazing dueling genre podcast host and has a lover of anime and all sorts of different things. And just breaking down what we think this movie tried to do with what this movie did and what this movie could have been. Oh, man. The last time Norman was on was for a remake of The Green Lantern. And he kind of came in with like this whole series and arc of what The Green Lantern could be. This time it was my turn to have like a deep, like, here's what I think a Dragon Ball series of movies could be. And it was very fun. I I love that episode. So the next guest, I have to open with an apology. The last time I did one of these year-end reviews, I misgendered Tanner Vogelsang, and I shouldn't have done that. Tanner, they, them, uh, was on this year to remake The Fifth Element. And they were really interested in talking about this crazy convoluted movie and it's kind of the only movie by Luc Besson that we're like yeah this one and then Tanner was telling me more about like kind of Luc Besson's life and we're like "Ooh, these are no good but Tanner and I had a really cool conversation about The Fifth Element which is a super fun movie so stylized and wild and it, but it just works so well in that moment. And they were so enthusiastic and they were an amazing guest. And yeah, so Tanner, thank you for coming on for Fifth Element. Apologies for last year. It would be one thing if it was just last year, if I didn't also misgender Tanner like in a text message like less than a month ago because I'm a monster. And uh, I'm trying to get better, but I think apologies are important. But anyway, Tanner, thank you for coming on for the Fifth Element. And yeah, super fun episode. Next was a trip back. We went to the far future with The Fifth Element and now back to the past with Corsica Wilson for How to Steal a Million, which was a Audrey Hepburn movie, which I feel like I'd vaguely heard of, but I'd definitely never seen. And I genuinely really liked it. Like part of the episode of me and Corsica just talking about How to Steal a Million is just kind of us quelling about how incredible the movie is. And like... Obviously, it's Audrey Hepburn. So they put her in these astoundingly gorgeous outfits. And then, like, the plot is super fun and interesting and compelling. And the dynamic between her and the lead actor, whose name I'm forgetting in this moment, is so fun. And then Kevin Mosteller, who's been on the show probably more than anyone else other than, like, hosts. Oh, this is his only appearance this year. 
oh no way it's almost like he was been super crazy busy uh but he came on to talk about the rocketeer which is a movie i'm like i'm pretty sure i saw 10 15 years ago but i i couldn't remember and it was like it's possible i hadn't and i just remembered like the trailer but like the rocketeer so fun and it, it's also there's like this element of just like the nature of like kind of like building up Hollywood. And it's also we had this conversation of like it kind of only works in that time. So our remake is set in that same time, but we have to come up with like big and other set pieces and that sort of thing. And that's <laughs> it's way towards the end of the episode. But I had this crazy idea for a set piece that Kevin was like, OK, let's freaking go. And it was fun and oh man the rocketeer plus then later on this year i went and had some networking dinner thing at idle hour which is the bar that has kind of like the dog bar from the rocketeer it was fun so then i had brock powell on brock is a friend of mine from uh, like writing groups and stuff and uh, brock is an amazing like voiceover performer and working actor and that sort of thing and this was his first time on the show and Brock was on to talk about Speed. Speed is a wild movie. Obviously, like, Speed you think about is like, oh yeah, it's the bus that can't slow down. And, but that's not to like a third of the way through the movie. Like, there's a whole other, like, the, the, the movie opens in the middle of another movie. And it's just, Speed is wild. And I, it's, I, like, it, I feel like it works once. And then you watch it and you're just like, but like, I don't think like, and then people try to replicate speed and I don't think you can replicate speed, but you can remake speed. And Brock and I, we did it and it's great and you need to listen to it. So then Samantha Schifrin and Diane Bloom returned to the show because they'd been over one time and they were looking at my DVD shelf and they saw that I owned The Outsiders and they were talking about it and realized I'd never seen The Outsiders despite owning it on DVD. And that was unacceptable, apparently. And Diane did so much work. She, like, she read the book. She did this. She did that. Sam did so much work. And they, like, looked into it. And we were just just basically, like, they were telling me the story behind these kids and this author and just everything that's going on. And if you want to deep dive into The Outsiders with two people who know so much about it and me who'd seen the movie, like, a couple days before, listen to The Outsiders. Sam and Diane were just great. And then Kamara returned. She was filling in for someone who ended up having a last minute cancellation. But Kamara introduced me to something that I didn't know exist. A non-Christmas stop motion Rankin Bass movie called Mad Monster Party. This was the first of my two Halloween episodes. And Mad Monster Party is nuts. I talk about it in the episode. But the thing that I'm still like, my mind is blown is that there's like five credited voice actors for everything. There's kind of the main lady who plays like, oh, the redheaded ingenue who's a villain, but oh, she falls for the lead. And then there's like Phyllis Diller, because Phyllis Diller. There's Boris Karloff. There's the lady that sings kind of like the opening theme song. And then there's one guy that does every, like everyone else. And it's all these crazy impressions and everything. And it's this movie absolutely set in its time, but also like we can, but because of that, it's so much fun to take that and like talk about like what would happen if we did that now and also it's not mad monster party it's mad monster party a movie that ends with a question mark and it's not even the only punctuation movie that i have this year more on that later the second halloween themed episode scott corelli and nick jimenez returned to remake friday the 13th Scott and Nick were on last year to talk about Nightmare on Elm Street, and we basically came up with The Nightmare on Elm Street and The Nightmare of Elm Street, these two incredibly distinct, separate, amazing takes on the original premise. For Friday the 13th, we end up creating this amazing blend of their two ideas into this, oh my god, I don't want to even spoil anything by telling you more about this episode. Like, this episode is, like, this is one of those things where it's like, oh man, spoilers for an ideal remake episode but like just the way that everything came together and the final title for everything that scott came up with you gotta listen to it you, like especially if you're listening now and you're a dueling genre fan like it's it's scott and nick and they're and they're talking about friday the 13th you gotta listen to the episode so then 
I talked about what's got to be the most recent movie I've ever talked about on this podcast because it came out in 2019. It's a Chinese movie called The Wandering Earth. And Caitlin Rogers, who was previously on a couple years ago to talk about Dune, before either of us saw the actual remake of Dune, which is very funny. The Wandering Earth is this movie that I kind of am aware of just through a whole bunch of other circumstances. And Caitlin is aware of because of a whole bunch of different circumstances that we talked about the episode. And it's one of those things where we both like, wait, you've seen The Wandering Earth? I've seen The Wandering Earth. And it's crazy, right? And you Like, it's bad, but you enjoy it. And you're like, yeah. Oh, we got to talk about this. The Wandering Earth is a Chinese disaster movie from 2019 where the basic premise is the sun is about to explode. So we're going to put a bunch of rockets on the planet Earth and move it into a solar system where we can survive as a species again. That's the premise. And then once we get to the plot, things go wrong. Oh, man, y'all. Listen to this episode. The next returning guest is Alex Kane. Alex and I have basically only talked about video game movies. Like, we did Mortal Kombat, Assassin's Creed, Angry Birds, the Pixel movie, and now we talked about Street Fighter, which was a movie I was really nervous about remaking just because I know how big the cast is and I didn't want to have to do that whole thing. But we watched this movie together and we genuinely just loved the movie. Like, we acknowledge that it's not the best movie we've ever seen. We do. But it's so fun, and everyone knows the movie they're in, and, like, I'm literally sitting, and the the paper with my recasting is still in front of me, and it's so good, and, like, I always love it when my returning guests know exactly the way the show works, and they end up getting the vast majority of the recasting, and that's exactly what happened with Street Fighter. Like, Alex was on top of it, and it was great and wonderful. Good job, Alex. Street Fighter was a, was amazing and so much fun. The next episode, the 18th episode, I am, I guess, uh, was What a Way to Go. I'm sorry, What a Way to Go! Because exclamation point, the other punctuation. And that's with first time guest Connor Pritchard. Connor, uh, I know through Connor's like online writing community called Only Writers, which I'm a part of. And Connor is the guy who created Workaholics and a bunch of other things, like working writer. And Connor had grown up with this Shirley MacLaine movie called What a Way to Go that he goes and watch. And his, it's one of his mom's favorite movies, and they rewatch it together all the time. And she's always been bugging him, Connor, you have to be the one to remake What a Way to Go. And he's like, I'm not really the guy to remake this movie. And we both agree. And, but he is the guy to talk about it and to like go into why this movie was so cool and amazing but also not like good like there's a lot of problems with the movie but it does some in- some very cool things like i think we both enjoyed the movie but acknowledge that it's not it's a, it's a really interesting conversation and obviously connor is like an incredible comedy writer so we have a lot of fun and there's a lot of jokes what a way to go thank you connor for introducing me to the movie and doing a remake with me very fun and so the big finale the last episode the 19th episode of season five was a remake of kind of the entire slate of dc movies and i had three guests for that scott corelli adam sheehan and first time guest andrew dorowski and i was realizing as i put together my list for this these thank yous that my season five began with adam sheehan and ended with Adam Sheehan, and I think that's really funny. And so thank you, Adam. Basically what we did was, if you haven't listened to the last episode, my god, it's so good. Like, we don't talk about an individual movie per se. All of us came in with a pitch for how we would begin, what's what's our Iron Man that, like, starts off this whole franchise sort of thing, but for the DC movies. And... I think there were seven different pitches and all of us had different styles in the way it was we pitched like Andrew and Adam and Scott all based things on comics and movies and shows. And like, I basically based mine on like the, the cartoons and the TV shows and like seven different pitches. And it's, we have so many different ideas and every single one of them would be a good movie. And I, I don't even know. It's, it's such a unique thing that is very much the essence of what Ideal Remake is supposed to be in the sense that, like, 
we have this thing that exists that exists and is fine in its own right, but we as fans and as creatives and 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 podcasters can come in and every single one of us can have ideas and some of us can have multiple ideas of exactly what it is that could be a, a remake and to like kick off and enjoy this world and every single one of these ideas is ideal because we're passionate about it and that's what i think is important about the sorts of movies that we talk about and that we bring to the table is that at the end of the day that's all that it needs to be as long as the creators are passionate about the movie that they're making and it's not just a paycheck i think that it can turn out great give people creative freedom and then let them go and then you'll get amazing movies like we talked about in the last episode so thank you to all of you for listening to this thank you for everyone for being a guest on my show so thank you to adam thank you to scott thank you to brian thank you to nick thank you to camara thank you to diane thank you to chris thank you to norman thank you to tanner thank you to corsica thank you to kevin thank you to brock thank you to sam and diane thank you to camara again thank you to scott and nick thank you to caitlin thank you to alex thank you to connor and thank you to andrew adam and scott and thank you all very much for listening this has been season five and i'll be back in a few months after tax season with season six and i'm just so excited for all the movies that i get to watch for that so until then i hope you all watch so many movies this year and i'll end this episode the same way i end every episode by asking myself what is my favorite quote from this season of ideal remake and obviously the best quote is the day bison it's it's the quote from street fighter where the, the day bison entered your life was the most impactful day of your entire life but for me it was tuesday that quote goes so hard Ah. in the meantime please subscribe to ideal remake on all of your favorite podcasting apps in the course of these three months i would love it if people went on to apple Podcasts and left five star reviews that'd be incredible And if you want to be the first to know when Ideal Remake is going to be coming back for season six, follow us on, I guess Twitter still exists in the moment, but Instagram, at Ideal Remake for both. And also, you can always jump in to the Dueling Genre Discord, which will be linked in the description below. So yeah, thank you for listening to Ideal Remake season five. Happy holidays, happy new year, and I'll see you next time.